Yes, welcome back to the Sports Show. Poppy, of course, the SNFL Grand Final was on one. last week. Stuart, of course, terrific winners over the Eagles. Now, just a quick stat before we get to the coach and one of the players. Yes. Sturt Eagles this year, mm -hmm. just over 30,000 at the game. Last year, Westies and Eagles, Eagles. 25,000. So yeah. Sturt, yeah. clearly big crowd pullers in like, this game. I right? tell you what, Sturt supporters, once they can smell success in the air, they definitely come out of the woodwork and these boys would know that more than Well, that. out of the woodwork no, come Marty yeah. and uh, Jared too. They've been good enough to give us some of their time. Mate, let's start with you, mate. I mean, first year coach, you win it. Um, everybody's going, well, it's just easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Coach, add a bit of water and grand final. Um, oh, I don't, say about, don't know about easy, but um, it's been an enjoyable year. Yeah. Um, when I took the job, talking to the players, they were pretty enthusiastic about improving on what they had last year and, um, you yeah, know, just come along and bought what I thought was a good game plan and um, the players really bought into it and, yeah, my job, like I said, was pretty easy. They would come pretty motivated to get better and, um, you yeah, know, I'm really pleased for the players, the success they've had this year. Jared, what about you, mate? I mean, new coach comes in, new philosophy. Was it easy? Was the buy-in easy? It was, certainly. Obviously, last year we weren't happy with where we went um, and with Marty coming in, he gave it a bit of a fresh look the whole place and obviously a new game plan and new everything. So pre-season was a little bit difficult early days just getting your head around everything, but after a couple of months I felt like we warmed into it and um, yeah, obviously got our season off to an okay start. You know, in, in previous years there were s small patches of brilliant football, but from a consistent even defensively, it wasn't, you know, you, you never knew what you were going to get on a week-to-week -week basis. This year I felt as though it was a, a really solid team all the way through. I, I really like that about them. Yeah, yeah, I think we do play team footy, I guess, and um, yeah, I'm not sure why we were so inconsistent over the past few years. There was, um, in 2015 especially, on the back of a pretty good 2014 yeah. year, 2015 was disappointing and we just couldn't string games together. Um, but yeah, this year I felt like we were much more consistent and uh, stuck to the game plan a well, lot more. Well, when you talk about the pre-season, hard to get your head around, explain that a bit further. Basically, the, the game plan was just something that was so foreign to um, so many of us. I suppose the guys in the AFL, um, they, they'd experienced it before, coming mm -hmm. from that environment, but um, us like SNFL players hadn't really had much of that advanced kind of coaching. Um, yeah, once we did get our heads around it, it was pretty simple to follow. So, Matty, you obviously came in with probably a lot of Sydney Swans, maybe a bit of Crows background with you. What were the elements that you felt as though were the missing ingredients for this Sturt squad? Um, or or, or, or must-haves? Oh, well, it's probably a bit of the defensive side of the game. I think um, the year before, they'd either games that Sturt had played, they'd either be blown out of the water or you know, had 15, 16 goals kicked against them. And, um, you know, coming from that Sydney sort of mentality and even Adelaide when I was there we were talked about defence first and yeah. all those sorts of things and I think in my career I think majority of the years finished in top four and points again so that was a big focus going in trying to get that defensive structure team defence sort of going and um, we felt like we sort of they did it in 2014 I think the third and they sort of dropped away I guess in that in 15 and I think the players knew how to do it. It was just to get that consistency of the effort and, and I guess, buy, the whole team buying in as well. Yeah. Matty, you touched on it. Jared touched on it too, that word consistency. You know, it's a nightmare for a coach. It's, you know, people say, to you, like, how, how do you feel coming out of the room? You go, oh, who knows? You know, you, and we've all been through that. But what was the hardest part, you thought, in trying to find that consistency over the course of the year? Oh, yeah, it's, it's a tough one because it is such a long year. You want to change things up throughout the year, but then you also want to keep that routine and consistency throughout the week as well. So... I guess it's finding that fine balance between the two. Um, try to change it up as much as possible, but keep you know your reviews the same. And where the win loss will draw the reviews the same, the previews the same. Um, you know, you're changing you know, maybe a bit of meetings and training a little bit differently. But um, I think I got the balance pretty well this this year. And I think being full time personally for myself made my job a lot easier. Yeah. Being able to contact the players, you know, during the day. We got a lot of guys who study and work and you know tradies and that. So um, being full time, been able to you know, actually sit down with a player and watch vision with them and go through the game plan was a big benefit, I think, to the players and to myself as well. You know, we talked uh, off air about the Bulldogs and that month of football was just extraordinary. I, I reckon yours was better and, I t and, and the reason why was that there was that Eagles loss in the middle of it and to, to bounce back out of that and do what you did against, and I was there on preliminary final day and grand final day, to bounce back out of that loss shows a bit that the boys have got sort of uh, above the shoulders as well. Yeah, I think... Um, we hadn't beaten the Eagles all year, yeah. so to lose to them in the final was disappointing. But I think 
from that, we learn a lot from that game. I think we got a little bit better, but we'd learn a lot more probably than the previous two games. And I think the Adelaide game, the boys were really confident going into that. We talked a lot about you know, being confident. We played a good year. Um, you know, we got a lot of guys who are in good form. Mm -hmm. So I think winning that game gave the guys a lot more confidence yeah. going into the grand final. And I think from a coaching point of view, we learned a lot from that Eagles game and the Crows game. And I think that um, that helped in the grand final. Jared, we sit here, we look at Matty, he's pretty relaxed, pretty calm, and we see him, you know, most of the game day, he's pretty clever at the camouflage, mate, but I'm led to believe he's had a couple of paint strippers over the journey in the change room. Is that, that fair? Uh, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's pretty individual with his sprays as well, we've learned that, very direct at players if they stuff up, but... Um, yeah, we, we know we just got to cop it and you know, we know it's for the best, the best for us, I guess. And it's interesting, yeah. isn't it? Because as a player, you know there's a time that you, you actually deserve it. Uh, you know, in the, in the era now, they're saying the younger guy, oh, you can't coach that style anymore and you can't have too much of that. And not, so there's a balance, isn't there? Maddie and Fine, that, did you think it was a pretty good balance? I know it's hard to say that the coach is sitting <laughs> yeah. right here, but did you, did you feel like when they were given, they were, they were deserved? Absolutely, yeah. They kept us on our toes a fair bit as well. Even when we were winning games through our streak in the middle of the year, we were still copying a couple of sprays here and there, which, which kept us on our toes. Obviously, like coming from last year, not winning many games at all and being absolutely stoked when we did win to losing games and then still saying this wasn't good enough, this wasn't good enough. It really kept us on our toes and, um, yeah. So, so in saying that, Matty placed bigger demands, the expectation was greater? Yeah, absolutely. Not so much, not everything was based upon the result, I think. It was more so on the way we'd play and the way we'd go about our structures and um, I suppose, yeah, implementing them in the game. I reckon, Matty, during the course of the year, there's not too much time to reflect, and even though you probably should, but have you had a chance two weeks on to look back at that season and go, where are the improvements for me as a coach? Where are they for us as a team? Oh, uh, I... I have a little bit. I probably yeah. I still haven't watched the game in entirety. Okay. Um, so we've we've had a few days, you know, celebrating that where we've had the game on in the background, watching it on TV. Right. But oh, this this week I'll definitely sit down and watch it. Um, I would definitely need to get depth. I mean, yeah. our reserves finished bottom. They yeah. won two games, so um, we feel Which like is, our, and it's always extraordinary given yeah, the result. It was. I think we knew that our best 25, 30 guys were good enough to play league footy. Yeah. Um, it's just that we probably didn't have the depth. Um, in that sort of, I guess those, you know, every team needs them, that sort of 25 to 50 guys. And yeah. so we just didn't have that depth. Um, we feel like our, and our under-18s under played finals this year and yeah. they lost the first final, but we've got some really good players coming through there. So we feel like next year we should be fine in terms of depth. Um, but it's definitely, I think, you know, another year under the game plan, there's a few things we changed halfway through the mm. year that we felt we got better at. So that hopefully with another pre-season we're better again. Um, and just, I think, development of the players. We've got a very young list. Um, so... You know, we've got guys who are 19, 20, 21. We feel like they've had 12 months. Hopefully in another 12 months, they'll be even better again. So, um, yeah, there's de definitely lots of positives um, in terms of the, I think we can get better again. Yeah. Mate, is there a fear the AFL might come and poach a fair crop um, of younger players or you, you think you'll be okay? Oh, it's a, it's a bit of an unknown. Um, you know, we've had, I mean, Jared, you know, Jared's had a really good year. Um, Andre Prella's had another good year. Mm. A few of our under-18s have had some decent seasons as well. So it's... It's just hard to tell, um, but yeah, we've got to wait and see. I think it's late November, the draft is, so um, it's just waiting till then and, and see what happens. But um, we feel like, you know, hopefully we do get a couple draft. I think it's good for the club then to yeah. show that, you know, we had development is right and, and, the, and the club is in a process of creating players. And like we talk about, if, they're not, if they don't play AFL, then they're going to be good SNFL players. So that's our goal. During the course of the year, we met up with Shane Grimm, of course, who was the conduit between you and the players on occasions. And now you understand why. Um, <laughs> the filter, I think. Yeah, the, the filter, filter that's think, right. Yeah, yeah the filter. Um, but he's also behind the scenes, obviously had an, uh, an input into a, a structure for longevity for the side. You know, he's now moved on. Um, yeah, it, it's very disappointing that Shane's you know, moved on, but I think he's moving on to a you know, he's moving on to the power in a, in a really good job. Yeah. Um, that he's really keen to to I guess move into the AFL system. Um, so he's you know, disappointing he's leaving, but I uh, look forward to him you know, in the future. Yeah. And I think he's going to enjoy his role, uh, his role. Um, yeah, so we've got to find someone there. But I think um, you know, the structure he put in place and the club have put in place. I think. Hopefully, yeah, we get the perfect person and the right person for the job, but I yeah. think the process and structure they put in place will be fine. Pretty good. Matty, can you see yourself moving on? I mean, we talk about other people, and we'll come to you in a minute, Jared. and I think you've escaped the heat, mate. But, you know, first year in, you've won a premiership, and obviously do a lot of things right. It's not a fluke. Sometimes it's a little bit of luck, but yeah. it, there's not that much luck that says, well, he lucked into it. 
Yeah. Could you see yourself moving in that direction um, eventually? Not not straight away. Well, I've signed for I've signed for two years, so yeah. I'll definitely do next year. Um, and then after that, I'll sit down with the family and, and assess and. Um, I'll have a look at you know what options are, um, and then see what happens. But yeah, it's definitely something that I'd look at doing is moving back into the AFL or up you know back yeah, into yeah. development or assistant coaching. Um, but like I said, I've really enjoyed my time this year, and the playing group are really good. And like I said, they're a young group, so we feel like we've got a good sort of future in their yeah. journey. All right, Gerald, we need to wrap it up, mate. The future for you, mate. Are we are we likely to see you with Stuart? <laughs> Do you see that little look? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, oh, no, what do I say here, Matty? Say so whatever you want. Oh, let me soften the blow for you, mate. Have you had some interest? Um, not that I'm aware of, no. No. Oh, please. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I don't know. All right, you get it for politics and you can go on and continue <laughs> yeah. coaching. Stuart, boys, had a great well year. Done, boys. Time to get to a break. Stay with us. Plenty to come. Thanks for joining us on this very special series we're running with Jenny Williams, an elite athlete, an elite coach, a master's in psychology, runs her company Best on Ground Performance. Let's find out what makes the elite athlete successful. Jen, thanks for joining us. Hi, Phil. Yeah, it's a pretty good question, isn't it? Well, you, you, you tag it down as the star factor. How yep. do we make an athlete an extraordinary or a better athlete? How do we make a star? Well, first of all, I think we need to know what a star looks like. And um, to find that out, I went and found all these athletes that had won world championships, Olympic medals, both coaches and athletes, X Factor players, and actually said, what do you do? Asked them a whole lot of questions and found out maybe what are all the attributes that make people not only maybe win the championship, but also have a good life afterwards. All right, we talk about, uh, if we put in a scenario, so like baking a cake. Yep. So there's not gonna be, I imagine after you've spoken to all these champions, there's not one singular ingredient. So there's, so let's call it eight or ten. Mm. And you have a star that's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Eight uh, yep. ingredients on it. Is any one ingredient more important than the other? Or uh, do you need all eight? Nah, they're all important, but the one that's the most important that I've found is care. And that comes from not only um, how you feel about your, what, when you're playing, but also afterwards, life afterwards. And so the care aspect is three things. Care about yourself. In other words, you actually, to play well, you have to be enjoying yourself. You have to like yourself. Secondly, care about the result. Care about, you know, do you want to win? It's really important. And the last of all, care about other people. Now that sounds a little bit counterintuitive, especially for individual athletes. But in fact, when you look at it, to be healthy, happy in that, even golfers need mates. They need people to go out and practice with. They need people, you're not gonna win all the time. And sometimes when you don't win, you need someone there to be the life jacket for you, to help you get back up again. So those three aspects in the care in the middle is by far the best. You found that? Unquestionably so, <laughs> unquestionably. You're gonna have success, you have to, and your teammates have to know that you care about them as well. Mm. You can't be saying, I care about them, but I don't actually care, because they know. So in the end, we'll agree that, and I, I agree with you entirely that care is the number one thing not just in sport but in life so I think that's the key what's the second ingredient? well there's a whole lot of others but just before we go on I'll say the reason why care counts so much is you've won a zillion trophies Phil I know that I've seen your trophy cabinet um, <laughs> how many ever ring you to find out how you are you how know many like ever ring me? have you ever had a trophy or a world championship ring you up and say Phil hope you're having a really good day no I reckon the the best I've got out of any of my trophies is one's a doorstop at my mum's house <laughs> I think that's about the best value. so that's the idea of what it's not only the result and it's not only about yourself it actually is about others because I guarantee you can have some of your mates that you played in those championships and when you have a reunion isn't it a great thing fantastic. talking about all the great things you fantastic. did together yeah. so that sort of goes then there's a whole lot of other aspects there's things like mastery how many hours have you done and um, these are all quite complex uh, different areas okay, but break, break mastery down for mm -hmm. us because I know because I've spoken about this before but for the listeners and the viewers what is mastery well this isn't my research this is looking at anyone who makes it to be fantastic how many hours do you have to put in? And of course there's exceptions, but in general, 10,000 hours to make a champion, except if you're a golfer, 17,490 hours. So again, that's because people can last longer in golf because you can still play at 50 and be yes. excellent. While in many other sports, um, you know, around the 6,000 hour, it starts to get really difficult. You get drafted and then people start to tell you you're not fast enough, you're not good enough. I don't think you're gonna make it. So again, that makes a big difference because if you don't get to those number of hours, you probably never will be great. All right, what comes after mastery? Well, there's things like- Well, they don't come after, so we're no, saying these care's are all number around. one, yep. so the other ingredients in your star. So these are all the other parts of a star. And one of the other things that's really important is talent knowledge. 
what do you know about getting better? And most people don't understand it. Like even things like um, Einstein would say, if you keep doing the same thing and Over expect and a different again. result, insanity. Even a flow rider, I keep doing the same old thing, wondering why things don't change. And I'll have players come and sit to me and say, Jen, Jen, I'm drafted. And they sit on my seat and I'll go, fantastic. And then they go, I'm training every day. And I go, but is everyone else in your team training every day? Oh yeah. Oh, are we all doing the same thing? Oh yeah. So how are you going to break into the team ahead of other people who have more hours than you and more experience? So again, you have to look at what, do I, what am I doing? What am I doing differently? What am I doing better? And this is teaching people to, instead of being emotional about what they do, to actually critically evaluate as in thinking about it and then going, oh, I've got a plan to get better. And that's really important. Okay, we're three ingredients <laughs> into our star. We need to go to a break. Stay with us, still plenty to come.